Good morning. Welcome to worship here at University Park United Methodist Church on this Palm Sunday and on the Sunday when we have our choir cantata. I was talking with Lauren about palms before the service and she reminded me if you're waving your palms side to side, not forward and back, okay? So <laughs> this morning's worship, as I said, features our choir cantata. I've been at rehearsals this week and, and I can tell you that what our choir has to offer us this morning is beautiful and deeply moving and I am very grateful to them for all their work getting it together and presenting it this morning. If this is your first time worshiping with us, or if it's your first time in a long time, I want to extend a special welcome to you. If you're part of our online community, worshiping with us on YouTube or on Facebook, we're delighted to have you with us, and I hope that soon you can join us in person here in our sanctuary. Our vision for ministry here at U Park is to be an intergenerational, diverse, radically inclusive Christian community where families and individuals can thrive. So whoever you are, whatever you may believe or question or doubt, you are welcome here at University Park United Methodist Church. I'll be in the lobby after worship. If you'd like to know more about the church or you just want to say hi, I would love to chat with you. As we begin our time together this morning, please do take just a moment to let us know that you're here by jotting down your name on our attendance pads that you'll find at the ends of your pews. This helps us know who is worshiping at which service, and if you'd like to be on our newsletter or to receive other email communications from the church, you can include some contact information like your email address there on that pad as well. Now, next Sunday, this may come as a shock to you, but next Sunday is Easter, and those of us on the church staff are not nervous at all. And so our schedule is going to be a little different uh, next week than usual. Uh, at 7 a.m., we'll be holding a, an Easter sunrise service in Wasser Chapel. Then at both 9 and 11, we'll hold traditional Easter services here in our sanctuary with a brass ensemble, some amazing music from our choir and guest musicians. Easter morning is one of the most crowded times of the year here at the church, so we've set up some extra parking just immediately across University Boulevard in the underground parking garage of the Daniels building on DU's campus. Next week, we'll send out an email to everyone on our contact list with a printable parking pass that you can use for that morning. If you can use that DU parking garage on Easter, that's going to help us out because we'll probably have a fair number of newcomers here who don't know about that, and we want to make as much room for them as possible. So if you can take advantage of those spaces over at DU, that'll help our church welcome new people on on Easter. Lauren Cowden is our youth ministry director here at U Park, and I want to invite Lauren forward to talk to us about some of what we have planned in the life of the church over the next couple of weeks. Good morning, Good morning. and Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Yes, as always, God is good. All the time. And all the time. Amen. Woo. Woo! Yes, Jesus! <laughs> like Pastor Andy mentioned, um, this is the official day as we begin Holy Week. So please take a look at our Holy Week schedule. We will be utilizing both Wasser and the Sanctuary. Next, this Saturday, is also our Easter egg hunt. We will begin our festivities at 11. The hunt will officially start at 11.30. We'll have a food truck and some flower um, potting, some flower potting. Um, please tell your friends and your family all are welcome, and we hope to see you at this event this upcoming Saturday. Lastly, the youth and I have signed up for the annual Furry Scurry that happens at Washington Park. This event will take place on Saturday, May 6th at 9 a.m. If you'd like to join us, please be sure to register and join our team, the U Park Bark Squad. If you cannot make it, you can make a donation to support our team on this day. Next in this Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Holy Week. 
My name is not Doug Morton, as is listed in your bulletin. Doug is not able to be with us today, so my name is Kama Hamilton Morton, and it is an honor to be with you this Palm Sunday. So I invite you to stand and to grab your bulletin and to join me in the call to worship. Welcome to Palm Sunday. The gospel tells us how the cheers of hope and victory filled the air. For the time being, the people were glad hearts. The king has come to we too come with hope for a new kingdom, a new form of power, a reign of peace. We greet and worship God who sends Jesus into our midst. I invite you to remain standing to grab your red hymnal and to turn to 278 as we sing together and wave our palms. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. classic story this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. 
Here ends our reading. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, through Christ's promise of forgiveness of sin. This is the power of the cross. God's people had long awaited the coming of Christ. Suffering under the oppressive Roman regime, they found hope in the words of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thinking he would establish an earthly kingdom where they would be free from Roman oppression, they prepared to welcome their new king into Jerusalem. A very large crowd spread cloaks and branches on the road as Jesus entered the city. Surrounding him, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Who comes in the name of 
Cheers faded quickly as the events of the following week began to unfold. Knowing the end was near, Jesus prepared for a final meal with his disciples. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it, and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and he said, This is the new covenant between God and the people, an agreement confirmed in my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. When you drink this, remember me.
The closeness of that last meal with his disciples was short-lived. For that very night, Judas took action to betray Jesus. Peter, one of his most loyal friends, denied him not once, but three times as religious leaders in Jerusalem provoked the government officials to have him arrested. Knowing what lay ahead for him, Jesus withdrew to an olive grove to pray. Abba, Father, he cried out, for you everything is possible. Please take this cup of suffering away from me, yet I want your will to be done, not mine.
The stillness of the night was shattered as soldiers came to arrest Jesus, whom Judas betrayed with a kiss. Jesus was brought before the Roman governor, Pilate, to stand trial, pressured by angry crowds who had been incited by the chief priests. Pilate condemned Jesus to death by crucifixion. Two criminals were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. People passing by mocked him, shouting, you said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. If you're the son of God, save yourself. Come down from the cross. The religious leaders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He said, I am the Son of God, so let God rescue him. If he will come down from the cross right now, we will believe in him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then he breathed his last.
Many women who had come to care for Jesus were watching him from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. What anguish Mary must have felt as she watched the lifeless body of her son be lifted from the cross. How can this be? Why must this be? Late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation for the Sabbath, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea buried the body of Jesus. The women from Galilee followed them to the tomb. Then they went home and they prepared spices and ointments to embalm him.
Early on Sunday morning, the women returned to the tomb with the spices. When they arrived, they found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. So they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there, puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes, and the women were terrified. They bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful people and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Remembering that Jesus had said this, the women rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. All hail the risen Christ.
You know, almost every week I stand up here and I share a story with you about some ministry that our church is involved in, often within our walls or outside of our walls, serving the community in all the ways that we do. This morning's cantata reminded me, though, that maybe the most important thing that we can do in our life together as a faith community is to worship God, to turn ourselves toward God, and to remind ourselves of the gift of life and where it comes. So, as I said before, I'm so grateful to our choir and to everyone who worked hard to produce this cantata, but it is a great morning to remind ourselves of the importance of our relationship to God and the importance of having a place like this where that relationship can be nurtured and can grow. That is part of what you support if you offer financial support or all the other kinds of support that you offer to our ministry. And I want to thank you for all the ways that you make us a better church. Let me invite you to rise and we'll join in our closing hymn. <laughs> We are the people of that humble and peaceful and loving King. May the new kingdom, the new reign, take shape in our midst, among us, as he promised it would. Go in peace. <laughs>